So welcome to the first part of this tutorial when we will learn how to shoot this uh, San Miguel bottle of beer with speed lights and today we'll uh, take care about the background of the, the bottle. In fact, uh, uh, in beer photography, in many cases, uh, the background is uh, our key light because she gives uh, the overall lighting on, in the shoot. As you know, when uh, working with speed lights, uh, we have uh, to deal with uh, a big problem. That is the, the fact that uh, we don't have uh, modeling light. So my my take on this is to have uh, a light bulb that I use to guess uh, a little better what my speed lights will, uh, will light in uh, a certain position. If you wonder why um, we illuminate the bottle from behind. I made a little clip that you can see now uh, with the light bulb. When I, uh, I try to light the bottle from from the front, and as you can see, the bottle uh, remain completely flat as sh as she is. I guess it is. And uh, in uh, another little clip, uh, I show you a a thing. Uh, about the, the bottle photography, as you can see, when I move uh, uh, the light bulb <coughs> behind the bottle, when I'm on the right, the right of the bottle, you see the reflection of the light bulb on the left, and when I'm on the left, you see the reflection on the bottle. This is a, a thing that you can have in mind when you see something strange reflected uh, from the right side of the bottle and you want to take care of it. Probably, no, surely, is a, a reflection that came from the opposite part. What you can see here is uh, the setup for the background lighting. I'm using a Nikon uh, Speedlight SB910 with a rock grid 3-in-1 with a 16 uh, uh, honeycomb grip uh, in front of it. To fire the flash, uh, I use uh, I don't use any pop trigger. Uh, the speed light it it's on uh, optical slave mode. Uh, almost any flash had this kind of uh, uh, function. Uh, if not, you have to to buy some uh, radio trigger, or if you use Nikon, uh, you can use the CLS uh, system. Or whatever. So this is uh, our setup. As you can see, the speed light it's uh, right behind uh, the bottle, a little down, and pointed up. This uh, is to give uh, a nice gradient behind the bottle. Okay, and now stop talking and let's shoot this bottle. So my light is positioned uh, behind the bottle. And for the first shot, uh, I just guess uh, what uh, uh, my values will, will be. That's why, because uh, I know my studio, I know my gear, so uh, I can have a, a, first, a first guess uh, what the values uh, will be. And so, uh, to start, uh, I have uh, ISO 100. Uh, shutter speed at one uh, on 160 and uh, an aperture of f9 and I set my speed light power to 164 and that's the shot okay the shot is pretty good but I think uh, I don't have uh, too much depth of field uh, the little drops of water uh, on the bottle are, are, are a little blur blurry in some part of the bottle. So I change my values, I stay on ISO 100, uh, shutter speed at 1 uh, on 160, and I dial my aperture to f11 and I lower the power of the speed light to compensate on 132. And that's the shot. Okay, much better. As you can see now, the, the drop of waters are 
more sharp than uh, in the first shot. That's why, because uh, we, we raise up uh, our aperture to f11. And that's pretty much uh, all for the background. In uh, the next tutorial, we will see how to add uh, the side light and to light uh, correctly the, um, the label of the button. And then uh, we can go Photoshop for the post production. So guys, we'll see you next time. Bye.